Anyway, <laughs> so welcome to another midday recipe, a live recipe. I'm just gonna wait for a few minutes and let a few more people come in and then we can get going. So just to let you guys know what I'm doing. So every day at midday, I am gonna be sharing a recipe with you. So I've got my computer here because um, the camera, the phone that you guys are watching me through, um, it has to be pointed the other way around so that you guys can read this. Um, so it means that I need to see all of your comments um, on my computer. So let me just refresh my page and I'll see if I can get it up. So you guys can ask me questions if we cook. You can either ask me questions about what I'm cooking. You can ask me questions just generally about food. Um, so just a bit of background. I am a vegan chef and I am founder and uh, I run the Vegan Chef School in London. So we train um, people who are, we call them passionate fooders or passionate home cooks, how to become professional vegan chefs. So let me just see if I can... Oh, there we are okay right make sure the sound is off and then I'll be able to see your comments so you know if you guys want to um, say anything hopefully positive please <laughs> uh, any questions about cooking you can ask questions about other things I don't know much else about anything else I only know about cooking um, so do ask me questions so I can see that Martin joined Martin thank you thank you for joining it's really really lovely to see you here so uh, a couple of uh, things that I just have to say before we get going with the recipe is um, as you know I just said uh, I'm gonna be here at midday every day if you guys can share this um, information in the different vegan groups and that would be great um, in a lot of the vegan groups they still don't like you to um, try to get people to um, like your page even if you're giving something away for free so of course you know this is something that is community building who which will hopefully like help a lot of people who are stuck at home who just want to kind of forget about everything that's going on for half an hour and want to learn how to cook so if you guys can share it in the different groups for me that would really really help another important thing is we're going to do spot the rainbow every day so for all you kids watching out there and uh, i know that my friend talisa her son teddy was watching yesterday um so we're going to do spot the rainbow every day so there is a rainbow in here somewhere somewhere there is a rainbow uh and you guys have to spot it um so we'll see who gets there first today but there will always be a rainbow in every recipe that we make together so I have also started sharing the ingredient beforehand. So if you do want to cook along, then you can, but I know that that's gonna be really difficult for a lot of people at the moment. So these videos, they are saved onto uh, the Vegan Chef School page and also the group that we've literally just set up yesterday, which is the Vegan Chef School Community Hub. So we will make sure that they're all there and so you can easily find them. So what a lot of people like to do with these types of um, recipe, live recipe videos is they like to watch it first, uh, ask me questions, um, really focus on what I'm doing and then cook, make it and watch it on playback. So, you know, you can always do that and that seems to be the easiest way. So I used to do this on Periscope back when Periscope existed and was popular and then moved on to Facebook Live and that's generally like the way that people like to do it. So, on to today's recipe. So today we will be making um, a savoury spice pancake with random veg. And so I'm trying to share with you guys recipes where that are really, really adaptable because it's hard enough to read a recipe and then go, okay, well, I don't have that one thing, therefore I can't make it, right? That is really, really tricky. And at the moment, a lot of us might not be able to get out to the shops. You know, we might, we might have things at the back of the cupboard that we've never used. So we're like, how, like, what am I ever gonna use it for? You know, you bought it, thinking that you know you're gonna use it for this one recipe and you just don't use it for anything else so let's get you guys using all those like back of the cupboard ingredients um, and you can do that by learning these really flexible recipes okay so who doesn't love pancakes seriously Laurie, okay tell me who doesn't love pancakes I bet there is not one person in the world that doesn't love pancakes so if you can name me one just try just try it but you can't but you go um, so we've got our pan on here. So I am using a lovely green pan. I really, really like these pans. It's a good non-stick pan, which for 
pancakes is really, really, really helpful. Really helpful. Virginia, hi, these classes are brilliant, so useful. Thank you. I, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm really glad that you're enjoying them. Please do tell me if um, there's anything you want me to do differently, um, if there are any recipes that you want me to make, if there are anything, any ingredients in the back of your cupboard that you don't know what to do with. And if I have the same, I will try to do a recipe with it. If I don't have it in, in, my, in my kitchen and I can't get hold of it, um, I will still try to give you tips on how to use it. So dig out all those like, you know, half packets of like bird's eye custard and stuff like that and I'll give it a go. Ah, oh, Teddy's already got the rainbow. He's already got the rainbow. So he beat all of you adults to it, which is great, which is great. Hello, Talisa and Teddy. Thank you for watching um, and good work on the rainbow. I don't know if Teddy, if you can spot what is at the end of the rainbow. So see if you can see, it's probably really, really tiny um, on the screen that you're watching it on, but see if you can see what's at the end of the rainbow today. Okay, so onto our pancake. So I'm going to be using leek and some red cabbage in my pancake as the veg. Um, as I said, like it's really, really versatile. So leek, you can use onions, you can use garlic, you can use um, spring onions, you know, anything like that is absolutely fine. Uh, but this is just so this is what I happen to have some lovely leeks um, So what I'm making today will either feed one person if you're going to be having it on its own Or two people if you're going to be having it with something else that will go on the side um, So I have made a salad to go with this which I'll show you guys later um, So I'm just roughly chopping the leeks. We've got a few more comments Lara, love these days, thank you. Ah, oh, would love some ideas for healthy, easy, sweet treats. That's great, that's really, really great because I am the queen of the emergency dessert. What is an emergency dessert? I hear you cry. Um, so an emergency dessert is, um, you know, when you're someone who tries to be really healthy, so you don't have naughty things in the house, and then you get those moments when you're like, I really just, I, I really just want a dessert. I really, really need it. It's going to be good for my mental health if I have it. Um, and you know, we all, we all have those moments. I have them quite a lot. And I think at the moment, you know, we all, we all want a bit of a sweet treat. Um, so I will do a show on emergency sweet treats, just with random stuff that I've got in my cupboards. Right, okay, I'm gonna pop a little bit of oil into here, and this is just olive oil. I need to, that's my go-to oil. I know it's like really confusing, the whole like oil issue, which is good, which is bad, that type of thing. And when I do food demos quite often, that's the question that I ask. So through the research that I've done personally, um, uh, I've gathered that olive oil is a pretty good all-round oil and it's quite healthy for you. Um, I've even heard a nutritionist say that uh, the fact that it does smoke is absolutely fine, uh, that that isn't an issue. Um, so this is the one that I always uh, I always go with. Uh, but you know, you use whichever one you're comfortable with. Just like a plain, like, you know, sunflower oil would be great. Okay, so we're just going to let that fry a little. Uh, and as I said... You know, any kind of like oniony um, type veg in there would be great. Um, any type of greens as well. Um, I've put them onto two in, like and finely slice them. Peppers. Um, you know, if you're going to use something that's a hard veg, like carrots, then I would suggest that you grate it because we want things that are going to cook fairly quickly in this and you're not going to be left with like big, like hard parts. So if you're going to use something like carrots, then grate them, um, and I do the same with potato as well. Megan, looking forward to my emergency sweet treat session. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, they're a really, really, really good thing to do, and uh, since I'm making my boyfriend, I've been introducing those into every like, evening meal. We have, um, we have a dessert, because actually, you know, if you know how to make a dessert in a healthy way, then it's a really good way of getting extra nutrition into your diet whilst eating dessert. Like, what could be better? <laughs> so, right, on to today's recipe. So I'm just gonna let those um, fry off a little bit and I'm going to add some cumin seeds to this. 
Um, so it's probably like about one teaspoon of cumin seeds. But remember, the whole idea of a recipe like this is that it's versatile. So if you're going to make it at home, just know that you can freestyle. So, you know, those veggies, you can change them up. As I said, like, you know, some colourful ones, that's why I'm using the red cabbage, it's great. Um, and, you know, with the spices, you can really, really mix it up. Um, in yesterday's um, video, I did mention about which spices are the ones to be careful with. So it's just the ones that are really, really strong tasting that you have to be careful with. Okay. Is it stars? At the end of the rainbow no it's not stars but good guess it's not stars so and just to mention actually one of the reasons why i chose to buy red cabbage is because red cabbage will last a really long time in your fridge and a little bit of it goes a really really long way so at the moment as you know we've got this crazy situation with you know food and not being able to go to the supermarket very much you should buy veg that's gonna keep for a while um, so, you know, green leafy veg, I absolutely love it, but maybe not the best buy at the moment because, you know, after a few days, it's not going to be looking the best. Um, but this uh, will keep really, really well in the fridge. And as I said, like, you'll get like so many meals out of this. Okay, so we just want to make sure that those leeks don't burn because leeks have a tendency to burn. Let's get going with the rest of the pancake mix. I'm talking too much. Sorry. Less talking, more cooking. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to add is some gram flour. Um, so just to say that all of my recipes are gluten-free, because I'm gluten-free. So we're using gram flour here. If you're celiac, then make sure that you use a gram flour by someone like Doves, um, because you, you will know that it is you know, completely gluten-free. It hasn't been made in the same factory as gluten-containing products. So... We've got our ground flour here. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of bicarb. So we've got half a tea bicarb. I'm just gonna take that off the heat for a second while we get this done. Uh, some stock powder, one, te one teaspoon, sorry, of stock powder. That's very important just to impart some yummy flavor. One teaspoon of nutritional yeast. So if it was down to my student here, I would be adding like the whole thing. Uh, the one thing to say about nutritional yeast is that uh, the more you add, the more it can make um, the inside quite wet um, and not fully cook properly. So that's one thing that you do have to be aware of. With the amount that I added just now, it would be fine. But if I added a lot more, it would be still quite um, moist on the inside, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you just need to be aware of that. So we're just going to add... A little bit of salt for my lovely salt pick. Okay, and then I'm just whisking it. This is the um, the whisk, the, sorry, the whisk part to an electric whisk. And I love these little things because you know they're not big; they just like fit in the cupboard really easily, and they do the job. And you don't have to buy you know a separate hand whisk, basically. Um, so we've got half a cup of water here so half a cup is 120 ml which is eight tablespoons so i'll say that again half a cup is 120 ml or eight tablespoons and with the gram flour it was half a cup that i added of that as well but you will see that i actually used this and that's because what i've done is i i always like figure out what receptacles are about half a cup or a cup that i've got around the kitchen if you don't have cup measurements, you know, you can do that. Um, so, and you can just do that by filling this with water to say half a cup and then popping it in here and going, oh, okay, actually, you know, half a cup is about up to there for that. So I know. And with um, recipes like this, you don't have to be completely exact. Um, there are some recipes where you do. Um, so I would say use weights for that. But with a recipe like this, you know, it can be, um, you know, it's a bit more flexible. So we'll add half the water first. Give it a good mix. Getting all those lumps out. And then we'll add the rest of the water. And the reason why I'm doing that is it just means that when you put the first lot of water in, you get all the lumps out, um, you know, whereas if you add it all in one go, it would be lumpy and you'd be mixing it and mixing it and you might have to get a blender involved to get those lumps out. But this is all good. It's 
all good. Okay, so we have added some bicarbonate of soda in there, which might add like a little bit of a kind of tang to it, which isn't very pleasant. So just to counteract that, we'll add a dash of vinegar, very, very tiny amount. You're not gonna be able to taste this, but it's just gonna neutralize the flavor of that bicarbonate of soda. And this is a really, really lovely product um, that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this, it, this was the only, um cider vinegar apple cider vinegar that i could find that was made anywhere close to the uk uh which is crazy because we grow so many apples uh, but this is really really lovely it's very sweet um it's actually from ireland um okay we've got another i would love to see some lessons on how to cook really substantial meals so my husband doesn't whine <laughs> that is a that is a common a common um, request so yes we will we will be doing that and in fact tomorrow I think I'll be making some uh, tofu with you guys and I will show you a really really great way that is um, by far the best way to cook tofu it will come out really really nice and uh, chewy and meaty every time um, so we'll do that tomorrow if you guys want to cook along all you need is um, I think some tamari um, or soy sauce, sorry, um, and uh, some firm tofu. That's all you're gonna need for tomorrow. So you can you can cook along with me if you want to. So we'll get that back on the hob, and we can get a few more herbs and spices. So this is where you guys can obviously you know add your own touch, add whatever spices you want to add if you've got any in the back of a cupboard now is the time to use them and i would say if they're a little bit out of date don't worry about it it's not going to kill you don't don't tell anyone i've told you that though a bit of cayenne sorry put a bit of cayenne in there and some oregano as well um, and some cumin because i absolutely adore absolutely adore cumin and we'll just give that a good mix let the let the spices fry and just release some of those oils ah dipti thank you for coming to us from nairobi and gloria late today oh that's okay you can catch up and also i'm going to be here every day at midday so you know we'll have we'll have plenty of we'll have plenty of video time together okay so uh, we've added our spices and now I'm just going to add some kidney beans to this. Just give it a bit more heartiness. You know, this is going to keep you filled up for longer if we add some beans to it. And I'm going to add some Tabasco into mine. So that is something that you can decide to put in or not put in. It's really, really up to you. Right, there's a really, really lovely habanero Tabasco sauce. Oh, really, really nice. Okay, and now we're just going to pour this in. And I'm going to just move things around so that the batter is getting all amongst those veggies because the batter is going to be the glue basically that's going to hold it all together okay so we have a few sesame seeds here just to add on top so you can add any seeds that are in your cupboards it's absolutely fine um, and it just makes it look a bit prettier as well on the top so do you ask me any questions that you have any burning cooking questions any queries about quince or consternation about cactus cooking cactus i don't know i don't know. ask me questions i can't think of anything else that begins with the, first, the same first letter but i'm trying i'm trying um and if anybody can tell me what is at the end of that rainbow over there, then please, please do try and try and see and type it in. Because there will be a different thing at the end of the rainbow every day. Okay, so I'm going to let this just set around the edge a little. 
and then we need to use something just to prise it up just to prise the edge away because what's going to happen is we're, we're going to want to flip this over at some point so we need it a bit clear of the edge so I'll just use my trusty little wooden spatula to do that and we'll just let it bake a bit more because essentially that's what we're doing we are frying the outside but we're also baking the inside which is why you know this is on a medium heat we don't want it on too high in heat because you'll scorch the outside and then the inside will still be um raw um and with chickpea flour chickpea flour tastes disgusting when it's raw i don't know if you guys have ever tried it but oh my god it's really really bad when you cook it it's fine though when you cook it it's lovely really lovely okay right here we've got a couple of uh oh after the live if you know site good price and quality for spices yeah i don't know if, i think i've missed a couple of your questions let me see if i can get them up uh so splashes of water what was that about i can't see the brand okay you guys are gonna have to like help me out here because i can't see all of your comments so what was the splashes of water about let me know that apple cider vinegar yep yeah, this was the apple cider vinegar if that's what you guys were talking about uh that i used um the brand of this was it the apple cider vinegar you were talking about is natural umber i have to admit that it wasn't cheap it was a treat to myself um other people treat themselves with trainers and clothes and you know that type of thing i treat myself with really expensive apple cider vinegar <laughs> so, but you know it's a really it's a really big bottle and it lasted a really long time and with apple cider vinegar you don't tend to use an awful lot of it and i also really really like supporting um our local growers as well so you know it made sense for me six comments back day what stops it sticking um so what stops it sticking in the pan so we are adding like bits of oil and also it's a really good non-stick pan so that is one of the keys um can we use normal flour if not too bothered about gluten yes of course you can use normal flour regular um wheat flour if you want to that's absolutely fine so this is still a bit jiggly I'll bring it over to you guys and see if you can see it jiggles it's quite mesmerizing that actually isn't it um and so it's not yet ready for me to flip over because if i try and flip it now what's going to happen that's going to go everywhere and also by the way i'm not going to do the whole like you know flip in the middle of the air thing that you do on pancake day no 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 no, no that's that's not gonna go well okay i treat myself with extra nice ingredients too yes lady after my own heart um so now you guys do you have any questions for me come on do you um let me know what you've got in the back of your cupboard what have you got in the back of your cupboard that you're like mm, i really i really shouldn't have bought that i really don't know what to do with it maybe you use it like once upon a time in like one recipe and then never again then tell me what do you have in the back of your cupboard um soon i'm probably going to be doing the same thing and digging around and you know finding all these ingredients that i haven't used yet and just like trying to make use of them so you know in this recipe you could use any of the spices that you've got in your cupboard pretty much pretty much um with the flour you know yes i use gram flour but there's loads of other flours out there and they'll pretty much work in this recipe the only one that wouldn't on its own would be something like a tapioca flour because it's too fine uh, but you could use it as a mix tapioca flour with the gram flour or you know like potato flour which is very similar to tapioca flour fine and white okay i have a ton of banana blossom yes i was thinking about that we can definitely do a banana blossom recipe i have some banana blossom hold my dogs carlin peas oh oh yes carlin peas are lovely um really really nice and you know you can use the water for that in place of aquafaba um so you know if you're going to boil them and then um you know you've got that water left over then you can use it as aquafaba which is awesome which means that you know we've got uk grown aquafaba um fantastic so yeah carlin peas are very kind of they have a lot of bite to them 
uh, but they're really, really lovely in a chilli. And there's one pot chilli that I do that we might do one day. That's a great idea. Tofu. Yes, we're going to cook with that tomorrow. And I think I'm just going to generally talk about tofu as well. So we'll talk about silken tofu too. Tofu too. Uh, buckwheat. I bought it and I've no idea. So, okay, so with the buckwheat, is that the buckwheat groats that you bought or the buckwheat flour? So I think this is nearly ready to flip. I'm not gonna flip it. Ooh. Still a little bit soft. I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil to that. So just to say about um, the oil, so I have it in this bottle and it's got this really, really great top on it, but not all oil has that. Quite often you'll find that the, the tip here is far too wide um, and you try and pour a little out like I just did now and loads comes out and you try and use your thumb in the way that, you know, the chefs do on TV and stuff like that and still too much comes out. And you don't want that so if you find that that happens then you can just use something like this these are great for pancakes when you just want to put a tiny bit of oil around the outside you want more control okay so buckwheat groats and you've got you've got groats and flour okay we'll talk about that in a sec let me just see this one no it's still too so at this point what you can do is either you can try and flip it or you can pop it into um, underneath the grill, you know, and do it that way. So if it's too thick, then you can do that. But I think that we just need to give this a couple more minutes. So with the buckwheat groats and the flour, so we've got some groats here. Where are they? We were using them yesterday. <clears throat> so these are buckwheat groats. These are really, really lovely. They are a complete protein um, and you can use them in place of couscous or rice or quinoa or anything like that um they're really really lovely really lovely um and we actually used these in the one pot dish yesterday so that's a great thing to use it for now with buckwheat flour buckwheat flour is a lot heavier than other flours so you can either use it um, in a mix to make something like a bread um, but you really do need to mix it with a lighter flour because it can be really really heavy I have algaes I bought them from French Brittany just have to rinse it from the salt they use to keep it what okay do you mean algae is that is that what you mean right I'll let you answer that and then I'll see if we can Yes. Okay. So I'll just leave that for a few minutes and there we go. So um so with the with the chickpea flour, like it does go quite a dark, a dark colour um when it's fried um but don't worry about that it's not yeah it's not burnt or anything like that it just it just goes a bit of a dark color um so we'll just give that a few minutes just to cook on that other side and then we can flip it over yes algies all oh, right algae so um yeah so algae you know any type of seaweed it can be kind of like quite salty and have like quite a strong flavor so it's quite it's good to pair it with other kind of like lighter flavors um so you can make something like a seaweed salad which is really really lovely and obviously like very very simple to do so but it'd be interesting to hear like what algae it is because they're all a little bit different amazing thank you i watched yesterday's lesson I just found you ah no problem no problem oh, always always happy to help and thank you for the comments so, right, there we go. So, this is pretty much done. There we go. So you see like it does, it does brown fairly quickly. So you have to be a bit careful with that. But yeah, it does go in like a really, really lovely golden color, which that's one of the reasons why I really like using um, gram flour is that it has a really lovely golden 
um, colour, which is the Maillard reaction. So that reaction that happens with bread and pastries and stuff like that, where it goes brown, that's what tells our brain that this is tasty. Um, and gram flour does that, but not all gluten-free flours do that, and they can look quite pale and not that appealing. So we can just leave that for a little bit longer. So I'm just pressing it just to make sure that the inside is done. And once that is on there, I'm going to show you, this is one that I made earlier. So now today we're going to have this, I'm going to cut it in half, so I'll have half and Jeff will have half. Um, and then I've made a really lovely light salad to go with it. And you know, you can, you can pair this with whatever you want. You know, you can, you can have like the more kind of like heavier stuff to go on the side, but for me, I prefer if I'm going to have something fried and a bit more heavy than like this, I'm going to have it with something light. So in here, we've got radish and cucumber and cress and just a little bit of salt um, and lemon juice. And that's it. Really, really nice and light just to counteract that. So looks fab. Size of pan. Oh, I don't know. Like six inches. Let me just see if it says. Uh, no, it doesn't say. Damn it. Okay, right, I'll, I'll measure it afterwards and then I'll let you know. Uh, you're hungry. Oh, good, good, good. That's what we want. Uh, it looks great. So I hope that this has inspired you guys to make, um, I'm going to have to try a bit of this. Maybe open it up a bit. But yeah, I hope it's inspired you to make um, this at home yourself. Yummy. Mmm, it's really nice. Really nice. I hope it's inspired you to just like use up random veg. Thank you for feeding my son so well. It's an absolute pleasure, Gloria. Um, yeah, you can just like use like lots of different things in here. Really, like this is another blueprint recipe. It isn't really a recipe. So if you don't have the exact ingredients, you know, you can really, really play around with it. Um, so I hope that that has helped. And I have one other question for you guys. Thanks and see you tomorrow. Okay, right. So before you go, I've got a question for you. So uh, Jeff bought these from the allotment the other day. Uh, and what am I going to make with them? What would you like me to make with them? You guys let me know um so lovely lovely rhubarb here can't use the leaves don't ever use the leaves um because they're poisonous but these lovely stalks we can definitely use for something so is there something you would like me to make um say in the comments and i'll see what i can do for you so i hope that you guys are all happy and well and giving each other lots of cuddles and love at the moment um and i might see you tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day i'm here every day at midday. Lots of love to you all. Have a lovely day. Bye.